Blazing Pyongyang, the former North Korean capital, is left behind as United Nations forces start their retreat before a million Chinese Reds driving toward the 38th parallel and Seoul. This is the bitter fate of the Allied armies who almost had the independence of Korea a settled question. Hard-won positions are abandoned as troops recross icy rivers on their way to a new line just above Seoul. While the retreat proceeds in orderly fashion, the United Nations seek to arrange a ceasefire order and to clear the entire Korean problem and bring about world peace. In Northeast Korea, the situation is even graver. Here, thousands of Marines and other United Nations forces are trapped by overwhelming masses of Chinese Reds who encircle them near the Changjin Reservoir. These are some of the hard-fighting Marines cut off by the Communists and whose lives for many anxious days were left in the balance. In the sub-zero weather, they make camp, awaiting assurance of evacuation, knowing they will not be abandoned to a relentless foe. Rations and water are scarce, but these hard-bitten troops facing a Korean Dunkirk never lose faith in their own ability and that of their air and sea comrades to keep fighting when the situation is blackest. From the Changjin Reservoir to Hagaru to Koto to Hamhong and the escape port of Hongnam is a long, terrible route, especially in the teeth of a stinging Siberian gale. This is the pack-up for the beginning of evacuation and the hope of survival. Snow-covered sleeping bags are the only protection for this group which walked for 18 solid hours and had no sleep for three nights. All along the route, they were harassed by communist fire from front and rear. Now they're getting set for a breakthrough during a Korean Valley Forge. This evacuation has been called unparalleled in U.S. military history. As they prepare to leave, the roads and bridges have been blocked or blown up by the encircling Reds. At a supply port in Japan, food and ammunition are packed to be flown to the trapped troops seeking escape. In the emergency, Japanese laborers cooperate to speed the vital material on its way. Flying boxcars head for the area where the plight of the beleaguered troops has aroused the entire nation. Bridge sections to replace a crossing blasted by the Reds are parachuted to reopen the only escape route. This is the first time a bridge has ever been airdropped. In the face of enemy fire, medical supplies and food are parachuted. Without them, the troops would never make it. The going is already tough enough. As the Marines leave, they destroy all equipment and installations that are impossible to transport through the menacing enemy. At an improvised airstrip, carved out of the frozen terrain by the Marines, wounded are evacuated to hospitals in Japan. Badly shattered men and men frostbitten beyond belief in the terrible cold are put aboard planes for a safe harbor. A five-year-old Korean child who suffered from Chinese fire is cared for by the Marines. They all fought heroically side by side in this grim business and none of the wounded is left behind. These are some of the casualties of the embattled 20,000 who fought their way through six Chinese divisions. Facing all the terror, the misery of evacuation and actual death, they can still laugh it off. This is it. It's the long, perilous road to Hungnam and the fleet of United Nations ships waiting to receive them. Many weary miles later, they join up with another encircled group of Marines. 
From here, it's a few short miles to friendly territory. But the road to Hung Nam has been a long road through hell.